Hey, it's Mook Booksley. Do you want to be a synth master? A synth wizard? There's only one way, you know. And that is through the power of the pitch bend. This is a moot point. So let's explore these tools of the synth masters in today's episode entitled How to Pitch Bend and Mod Wheel. It seemed sensible to me to start with the synthesizer that started it all as far as this whole left hand controller thing. The Mini Moog. This is a reissue, of course, a uh, little bit different, got the extra LFO, but these are exactly the same. The pitch bin wheel, I guess you could say was a brainchild of Bill Hemsath. Thank goodness that was invented or we would never have some of these musical styles that I'm going to talk about right now. So the Mini Moog has been used by a lot of classic synthesizer soloists like Chick Corea, Jan Hammer, George Duke, and uh, they all kind of had a different way of approaching this thing. First of all, one thing to note about a lot of older synthesizers, they usually don't have spring-loaded pitch bend wheels. That means if I do this, it's going to just stay there. That's not a big problem, though, because there's a big center detent here. So you can really feel that center point. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the Mini Moog, though, is that most of them don't have a dead zone, an electrical dead zone, right there in that mechanical dead zone, as it were. So that means that slight movements of this wheel will yield pitch variations like this. In my case, I can wobble the wheel a little bit. Some, some mini mugs I've played are not like that. Uh, some are, but yeah. I'll do it on one oscillator so you can really hear it. So, you know, I'm always kind of like making sure that I have that thing centered. You don't have to worry about that on modern spring-loaded pitch bend wheels, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. One of the more classic examples of pitch bend uh, usage on a Mini Moog, kind of the Jan Hammer style, which is like a lot of this stuff. Like As you can tell, if you've listened to much of my stuff at all playing the Mini Moog, yeah, Jan Hammer is like a huge influence of mine, and I can't help it. It's not like I'm trying to be Jan Hammer. It's just that that playing style resonates with me. So how do you do that Jan Hammer thing? Well, it's a whole lot of this type of stuff. It's a whole lot of uh, upward pitch bending, and usually only like two or three semitones. You have to control... Because the, the uh, range, here's the range of pitch on the, the wheel on a Mini Moog. It's not quite a musical sixth. It's, it's close. It's a little bit over. So a lot of the Jan Hammer stuff is like uh, upward pitch bend. To a note, and then you hit the note. Or you can do a lot of uh, bend up and back, and then play the note that you bent to. Or if you want to do a minor third, or uh, just a second. It just, you, you kind of have to just develop a technique to kind of know exactly, like you start to develop the muscle memory to know exactly how far is two semitones or three semitones. And then you just use your ears to make up whatever, you know, slight differences. As you can see, I hope you can see, two semitones on a mini Moog wheel is not very far at all. And they're all slightly different the way they feel. I've never played too many Moogs that felt exactly the same. Um, also, of course, there's modulation. And you want to use that to add vibrato to a sound. Not always vibrato, but that's sort of the classic usage that I'm talking about today. So, so let's talk about how Chick Corea would use it, the pitch bend wheel. I've noticed that like if you, if you watch him, he kind of uses his fingers instead of the thumb thing. The thumb thing is just easier for me because I, I can rest my hand on the side of the synth and just sort of 
do that, but I've seen people do this too. It, it's just whatever you get used to. I find this to be easier to do on spring-loaded wheels, but on this, you kind of need that precise control over exactly where that wheel's going because it goes where you put it and it stays. Chick Corea used a lot of modulation, and the modulation is never just like full on. It's just you have to, you know, you have to be ginger with it. He would do a lot of these like squeals. And this and then another technique that I like to use is sort of this like kind of uh is a little more guitaristic. Lately I've been getting into this thing trying to sound like uh trying to do like an Alan Holdsworth type of a phrasing with like he would do on guitar, like using the uh you know the tremolo arm. And, of course, most whammy bars bend the strings down. Um, unless it's a floating tremolo system, it's like it bends the note down. So a lot of times you're doing a lot of pre-bends like this. So it's, it's bending down a lot, so... You know, kind of just a lot of those uh, real subtle lyrical type of. So next we'll talk about uh, the more modern type of uh, pitch bend wheel, which is the uh, spring loaded kind. So this is a little more commonplace than a Mini Moog. Uh, it's an M Audio Oxygen 25, and I really like it because it's so small and. Uh, what do you find but the standard pitch and mod wheels like a Mini Moog? Except the difference now is that this is spring loaded. The DX7, being such a, a huge game changing synthesizer, adopting this style with the spring loaded pitch bend, I really do feel like that's why so many synthesizers have it now. But where did they get it? The Mini Moog. So, what are you even trying to do with a pitch bend wheel anyway? The idea, of course, is to add expression to your playing. I'm going to give you an example. Here is the lead line that's normally played on guitar at, that opens up Hollow Notes, Sarah Smile, but with no expression at all, except maybe some grace notes or something, because I just can't help myself. Okay, sounds like a really bad general MIDI version that you downloaded off, you know, a school computer in 1996 or something. So if you're going to add some expression to it, well, first of all, I would play it with a little more legato. Okay, so... So I'll put some... All right. So, of course, I didn't even really connect the notes or anything. I just really played that thing as lifeless as possible. So how do we add some life to it? So the way you'd play it on guitar, of course, is with bends, you know, like, the, you know, string bends. So that means we're going to bend upwards. So we're going to start on the note a whole step. So the standard pitch bend range these days, and really one of the more musically useful pitch bend ranges is uh, a whole step in either direction. Okay, but of course that's variable, but that uh, either that or a step and a half is the way I keep mine all the time. So I'm going to start a whole step below the note that I want to hit. So my target note is D, so I'm going to hit a C and then bend up to D. And that allows me to bend back off of it, which is a, another real guitaristic type of thing. See? You do that again down here. Then add a little modulation on that note to let it bloom, see? This sound has a little bit of a swell in it, but normally I'll just have this kind of like with a... Um, 
just just adding you know vibrato and that's the way you would you know just like it's like a, the way a singer would do a note as it you know let it bloom let a long note bloom so the thing you don't want to do is this like you don't want to like go full on with the modulation right away you want to ease into it just a little bit This next part is going to have an upward bend and a downward bend, so... So we did a pre-bend there. So instead of going... So I, I hit the note. I hit the note that I want to, to sound last. <laughs> okay, how am I going to explain this? It's a pre-bend. So the idea is to, to really quickly bend the pitch down, then strike the note and bend up. So, so there's a bend up. But yeah, it's just, you know, you start to get these techniques faster so you can... A synth wizard. Uh, <laughs> so all put together, we have this. And so then the next part, of course, is... So there's one of those yawn hammer. So I hit a note. And then I bend back up to the note. See? So there's another, like, quick bend. You use the bend as part of the note, so you always have to kind of be mentally aware of where that pitch bend is. Like... For me, getting the feel of a pitch bend wheel, a lot of it is just kind of like understanding the muscle memory of like where to park it when you want to get a certain effect. So I know that I have to go kind of halfway if I want a half step, you know, in this configuration. Most mod wheels are usually set to a ridiculous range. So you want to add just enough. You kind of like want to ease on it. Like a singer would never just uh, straight into a, a you know a note like that unless that's you know unless they're they're just being goofy like that. Um, <laughs> there is a little bit of a ramp time, so so let's talk about the mod wheel and adding vibrato a little bit more. But first, I want to switch synthesizers. You'll see why. This is the Nordlead 2X. This is one of my favorite synths ever. It's just a great lead synthesizer. And one thing you may notice is that it has this weird little wooden thing instead of a pitch bend wheel. And then it has this uh, stone mod wheel. That's just a standard mod wheel, but it's got the cool texture and I've rubbed most of it off just from years and years of using it. So one of the things that's very different about this sideways pitch bend is that it's not like a Roland bender or the one I'm about to show you in a minute where it's like a slider that has a center detent. This actually does not have any sort of center point, uh, so to speak. It floats there. It's a, it's a heavy-duty spring steel or something and it just kind of floats there this means that you can use your finger to do vibrato so not only can i do the usual pitch bend techniques like i can also do this this number here here i'm gonna take the unison off so you can really hear
So I find that playing leads on this because of this weird pitch bin, uh, it, it makes me play differently. I actually feel like I play a lot more fluidly this way just because of I don't actually have to use mod wheel vibrato at all. So about vibrato... I, like I said before, you don't want to be like doing this whole, you know, if I wanted to add, I have a sequence of four notes. Say that's one line of the melody in my song. Okay, so this last note will be held for a while and you don't want to bore people. So you want to put some sort of vibrato or some sort of swell or something there, so... That may have even been a little much. Depending on the type of music, though. See, I kind of ease into it a little bit. Of course, if it's a, you know, if, if you've got a shorter span of time, you want to make that delay time shorter, so. So, still, I'm not adding the vibrato as soon as I attack the note. I'm not going. You know. Sometimes you want that, but I find that it's better to kind of... To kind of add it slowly. You don't have to worry about this if you're using this thing, though, because you can kind of just... It's however you feel it. It's like playing the guitar. It's like... I'm going to take the uh, portamento off. So, of course, you know, you can get as wild as you want to within whatever the pitch bend range. So, I've talked about standard pitch bend wheels and mod wheels, and I've talked about the weird Nord ones. So, now we're going to talk about these sideways kind. I like this little sideways bender thingy because there are a lot of techniques you can do on this that you can't really do on anything except one of these horizontal bender situations. What I like about this is that you can assign it to stuff besides pitch, but also you can set the upper and the lower range to be different. For instance, I can make the upper range of this thing be a step and a half, but the lower range be just a whole step. So I can go... But maybe I don't like having that step and a half in the other direction, so I've got it set to only a whole step, so... So now I can go... And if I want vibrato, I can just grab it and kind of go back and forth. Let's put it back to whole step, and let's talk about some of the cool techniques you can do with this thing. This kind of also applies to like a Roland uh, horizontal bender, but just realize that this isn't actually a lever, it's a slider. It's a, it's a spring-loaded slider that, that moves real fast. So it does work a little, does feel differently than a Roland bender. Um, but you can do a lot of the same techniques, such as some of these sort of like R&B type of uh, leads where it's it's not something you could really do with a square wave LFO, but it's almost kind of like that type of thing. So like... So that's to give it almost those square, like a square type of a modulation. So it's almost a trill. It effectively kind of is a trill. So there's that. And then, um, of course, if you want to do a little bit more smooth vibrato, you can kind of grab it and be a little more ginger with it. So. That way you can move in both directions and get a little bit more smooth. smooth. Thank 
you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe and like and all that stuff that people always tell you to do at the end of videos.